our moderator, county commissioner, and member of the Edgecombe County Human Relations Commission, Mrs. Viola Harris. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. We're delighted that all of you are here. It means that you're dedicated to what you plan to do for the citizens of Edgecombe County. So I'm just going to go over a few of our four rules. All candidates and other attendees are asked to respect each other and the sponsors of this forum at all times. All candidates will be allowed us two minutes for all speeches and comments. All candidates, political material, signs, posters, will be restricted to the hallways or other designated areas by the four sponsors. No non-political material will be allowed in the forum. We know that all of you are busy, and we want to make sure that we do get some questions in for each and every one of you. So we're going to ask you if you have any questions that you need to ask. Please raise your hand, and an index card and a pencil or pen will come to you. Raise your hand if you've already your questions. Someone from the Relations Commission will collect them. church 
uh, in Eastern North Carolina for the last 20 years. I am a public school educator, spending 18 years in the classroom following 15 years as an engineer. As an engineer, I've learned to re-engineer policy and re-engineer criteria so that they work better for the people they're intended to serve. And as your state senator, and hopefully you will hire me again to be your congresswoman, I will make those policies deliver for us. We deserve our fair share in Eastern North Carolina. I'm one of us for all of us, one of us who will fight for us, and I am running to deliver a rural new deal to our district. That rural new deal is universal broadband, universal health care, raising the minimum wage, creating good paying jobs in Eastern North Carolina. I am tired of our children having to choose between growing up and raising their families in a place that they grew up and love and a successful career. I'm about job creation in Eastern North Carolina and under my leadership, as my minute closes out on the first question, under my leadership as your state senator, Edgecombe County became less economically distressed and I'm happy to be a part of that solution. I will be the same problem solver for you in Washington, D.C. Okay, what actions will you take in your position as a citizen? The action that I will take to enhance the quality of life for citizens is to advance a bold proposal that is big enough to meet struggling, working families all over this district. This district is tired of voting to send representation to Washington, D.C., and then Washington, D.C., forgetting about the very people who sent them there. If you hire me to do the job for you, I will work to deliver economic development in North Carolina's first congressional district. I will work to advance policy to create jobs, good paying, clean energy jobs, working closely with the Biden administration on initiatives around clean air, and renewable energy and making our communities safe. And in the remaining 30 seconds, in everything that I do, I don't go by myself. I'm taking each of your voices and your values to Washington, D.C. to make government work for all of us, not just the wealthy, not just the well-connected. We need to address extreme income inequality by raising the wage, but also creating equal pay for equal work. As an engineer, I did not get paid what my male counterparts made just because of my anatomy. I know that God made us equal, and I will fight for all of us to have access to the ballot. I am the champion in this race who worked hard to protect your voting rights. I will continue to do that. I will also continue to work hard for universal health care. I am the lead champion in the, in the fight to expand Medicaid, working closely with Governor Cooper to get that done. In the remaining one minute and 15 seconds that I have left, I'd like to leave you with a few questions of my own. I want you to imagine the district, the first congressional district that you want, and an America that feeds its families from family farms and not corporate farms, an America that leads the world in taking on this climate emergency, an America that dismantles systemic racism and discrimination and builds systems of equity instead, an America that leads the world in making sure we have guaranteed broadband, health care, a living wage, clean air, clean water, and a roof over your head. If that's the America where you want, that you want, an America where your block is not your blessing and your zip code is not your destiny, if that's the America that you want, you can't even spell that America without Erica. Remember me when you go vote. I'm Erica for us, one of us for all of us. Text join to 51550. And when you cast your vote starting next Thursday, April 28th through May 14th, early voting and on election day, if you want a champion that will fight for you, fight for us, fight for Eastern North Carolina, hire me, I will get the job done. God bless you. God bless the 1st Congressional District, and God bless America.
Well, hello, everybody. Hello. It's so good to see you in Tacoma County in Tarboro. As a matter of fact, I'm here, and it reminds me so much of a district meeting, because <laughs> we have all of our meetings here. But my name's Don Davis, and I want to let you know Don Johnson is a compliment. I think I'm trying to be nice, right? <laughs> I grew up here as a native of Eastern North Carolina, and it was early in life that I learned three important values. The first value, and Barbara Campbell David, you know this so well, is my grandmother taught me the importance of faith. And she said that through faith you can move mountains. And she would always take her hand and point it up at the temple and say, what, you get up here, you just can't get rid of. And she was talking about the value of education. And she went on to tell me, and I remember the days, work hard, work hard. And your work hard, or your hard work will pay off. And it's these values I've held on to, no matter if I've been the mayor of Snow Hill, no matter if I was um, serving in, our, in, in the Air Force active duty for eight years, no matter if it was serving in the General Assembly, where I fought so hard for Eastern North Carolina, no matter if it was serving our district, where I fought hard to make sure our counties could continue to deliver for our party. Serving in the General Assembly, I deliver and have the strongest record of delivering for Eastern North Carolina, hmm. passing over 90 bills as a primary sponsor that became law. I was the one that raised the age in North Carolina and the one who fought to wait, uh, uh, increase wages, and especially for our non-certified this last budget round. I'm asking you for your support, for someone with a proven record, a proven record, of getting it done. Thank you. Last year, Congressman G.K. Butterfield, and by the way, I believe he served the families of Eastern North Carolina very well, and I think he's worthy of an applause today. He shared with us all that he was planning to retire. And he went on to say, it's time now to pass on the baton. Where well, everyone, I'm extremely proud and interested to take on this baton for Eastern North Carolina. Why? Because we're at a point now that we must transition, we must transform, we must empower the next generation of leaders and entrepreneurs in this state. It shames me, it shames me as an educator with over 20 years, going from school to school to school, and hearing a common theme amongst students who are not in the same circles. I've heard too many times, I'm leaving and I'm not coming back. Do you realize on a, an odd dynamic took place at a time that we gained population uh, expanded and picked up a congressional district, the first congressional district was the only one that lost population. We must hold on to our young people. We have to respond to their call for hope and opportunity. We must bring jobs into this region. We have no choice, and we must deal with the three crises that are taking place. We have a major education crisis, a major economic crisis, and a major health care crisis that need our response. I'm up for the task. I'm up for the job. Please, if you want to get it done, vote for me and vote for the person who can win, actually win, not just the primary, but the general election. Thank you. Enhancing the quality of life starts with strong education. We've lived through Leandro, and we've seen, and we know, the courts have said we've not properly funded the schools. Therefore, as your congressman, I'm going to fight to make sure 
we have a, an expansion of Title I funds and that we, that we actually reauthorize Pell Grant. Why is this so important? Watch this. 13 out of 19 counties in this district, 100% of the schools are Title I. Meaning that you're dealing with disadvantaged children, low academic achievement, and high poverty. We can do better. We must do better. And yes, we have to also make sure that we're adequately um, funding special education. And guess what? I'm working right now. Let's be clear about who has championed the effort of Medicaid expansion. I negotiated the provision that called a legislative study co uh, commission to study Medicaid expansion and bring back a recommendation in short session. I want to be clear. I'm still a state senator, and I'm pushing. If North Carolina fails to get it done, then I'm going to go to Congress and look at another option. We must allow people the opportunity to live. I will say today, if you want an Eastern North Carolina, that's going to work for all of us. If you want an Eastern North Carolina that's not leaving families behind, where you can actually put food on your table, you can live, you, you can survive, and I see these young people, and they can stay here, then I'm asking you to vote for a person who has the record, the real record, of getting it done. Don Davis, not Don Johnson, will get it done. God bless you all. <laughs>
who was double bumped and placed in the same district with an incumbent Republican. Despite the district moving to about a D plus four, D plus five, I was predicted to lose that seat. But I won that seat because I've spent the last 20 years serving in local elected office as a school board member, serving as a faith-based leader, bringing communities together. And even though I was predicted as a Democrat to lose that seat, I won it because I built a strong working class coalition of everyone who knows that Senator Smith will deliver for you. You hire her to get a job done, she will do it in an excellent way. I've represented 11 of the 19 counties in this district. No other candidate in this race has the experience of representing 11 counties. Those 11 counties became less economically distressed under my leadership. Despite being a black woman and a Republican supermajority, I was elected freshman senator of the year because of my strong work. In every session I served, I was um, selected as senator of the year for the hard work that I put to the task. I will represent this district by making sure I deliver jobs, that I raise the pay. Let's be clear, my record is clear. I was the first legislator in this race to file for Medicaid expansion. I was the first legislator in this race to file to raise the wage. And I was successful in raising the wage for state employees in my last session that ended December 31st of 2020. So the same way that I deliver, I will create opportunities in this district by working with your local elected leadership as I have done. I see many council people that I've served with. I see county commissioners that I've served with. I see a county manager that I've served with. This building is named after the county manager that I worked with, this assembly hall. And so it's that leadership and relationships and knowing how to get the job done. I will fight for you. We'd like to thank Ms. Smith and Mr. Davis. And we will excuse them because they have another uh, forum they need to get to. We thank you. If there are any other questions, please feel free to write them down and leave them with us. And we will make sure they get them answered for you. Thanks, everybody. Hey, how you doing? and served as the first female black mayor that they had in Greenville and served two terms or completing two terms in the house. And I knew that the seat was being vacated by Senator Davis, who was running for Congress, and I knew that we needed a strong fighter in Eastern North Carolina. So with that being the case, it was important for me to make sure that I stepped up to the plate. Why? Because I am passionate about what I do. I believe in being accessible, I believe in being accountable, and I, most importantly, believe in putting people first. Many times people look at us like uh, it's an honor to speak and talk to us, but in my reference, it's an honor to speak and talk to you because you're the bosses. You're at the top. We're elected by you. But when you don't have that person to be your ear, when you don't have that person to listen to you or to call you back or to hear your concerns, then what are we doing serving? because we're not serving you, we're only serving ourselves. So I'm interested in running to make sure that I serve you. My job is to continue to put people first. Okay, good thing I wrote these down. I was trying to be smart. <laughs> the next question was my main priority. My main priority is to um, look at, I have some, a couple of things that I wanted to highlight during my campaign. But what I've done, when they were drawing the maps, redrawing the maps, I started talking to people early. I said, if you're interested, you, you gotta start doing your homework. And so my priorities on my campaign is education, as you've already heard about, 
affordable housing, and I think everybody's talking about that all over the world, health care, mental health, economic development, and criminal justice reform. So if I look at what my main priority is, my main priority is what your main priority is. Because it can't be about Ken. It's got to be about you. When we go into the legislature to make rules and laws and, and all these things, what I do is I like to hear from the people. Because that's how laws are made. You tell us what's working, what's not working. You tell us what needs to be changed. And then we need to make sure that we take a look at that. And that's what I'm going to do. Now, I do know that one of the main things we need to do is expand Medicaid. And we all know that. So prayerfully, on May 18th, when we go back into our short session, we'll have that opportunity to start working on expanding Medicaid. Um, we've been hearing rumblings that they're going to do it, but I've been hearing those rumblings since I started in the House. So I don't just believe it without a fight. So I'm going to continue to make sure that I fight because we're still in a pandemic, and during this pandemic, we've already lost a lot of lives. But we have a lot that's going on that we need to be aware of, and then it's job creation at the same time. So my main priority is to make sure that we first expand that Medicaid, because if we do that, that's economic development. And the third one was my action to enhance quality of life. Well, I think that I've already said that, which gives me a little time to, to say a little bit more. But if we do expand Medicaid, which creates more jobs, which is economic development, then I think that we're going to have more individuals being able to have affordable housing. Um, we we, we got to make sure that we're looking at what's happening, because in our communities, people are being priced out. When we get to a position where people uh, look at money over people, when it's politics over people, that's an issue. I've had individuals coming to me and say, you know, my coworkers who, who have been working with me every day, they're living in the hotel now because they're being priced out. So that's an issue. So we have to make sure that we're working on that. That's quality of life. If you don't have the basic human needs, then how can you deal with everything else? How can you focus? And it's not just adults. That's also with the children. And that leads into that mental health. Five months of isolation has done so much for us. And it's not been good things. I've been hearing about more suicides, more issues. We have to make sure that we're taking care of people. And if we don't do that, we're going to continue to have those same issues. So my work in the mental health field for so many years has equipped me to make sure that in that legislature that I fight for individuals and make sure that we don't say mental health is taboo. All of us need to make sure that we're taking care of ourselves and each other. Thank you. to make sure that I get an opportunity to get to know each and every one of you. I know it won't happen overnight, but if you contact me, if you reach out to me, my card is on the table, or candysmith.com, candy with a K, then I will respond. And some people do it on Facebook, and I try to respond that way as well. Pitt County and Edgecombe County has now been combined together. This is a new district, and so um, you don't have Senator Fitch um, representing you anymore. So I just want to make sure people know that I am not running for the same seat that Senator Fitch is. But I am running for the seat to make sure that I can represent you. So I look forward to hearing from each and every one of you. Please spread the word, and you will see me around. God bless you, and have a wonderful evening. Thank you. Thank you.
doesn't have anyone running against her. She did want to have some comments. Make sure everybody still knows who she is and how to greet her. Thank you so much. Good evening. Thank you, Ms. Moderator. My name is Carol Allen White, your North Carolina Clerk of Superior Court for Edgecombe County Judge of Probate. I'm a candidate for election this year. My name will not be on the ballot in May, but will be in a general election. And I just want to thank you and ask you for your continued vote and support. I have to leave early this evening. I have another engagement, but I love what I do. I care. And while I'm interested in running, to continue to serve you, to the best of my ability, and how will I continue to enhance the quality of life is to continue to communicate, educate, bring awareness, and to continue to share and make sure it is written as we plan a state's plan. <clears throat> Again, I just want to thank you, and I really appreciate each one of you for being here on this evening. Again, I'm Carol Allen White. You will elect the clerk of court for the county of Edgecombe, State of North Carolina, judge of probate. Thank you so very much, and I look forward to continuing to serve you in the seat of the clerk of superior court of Edgecombe County. God bless. Next, we are going to the city of Rocky Mount City Council. Bronson Williams had registered. Crystal Lyons Anderson. I didn't have him on the list, but I did see which is going. To everyone. As you said, my name is Ross Williams, a candidate for Rocky Mountain City Council uh, Ward 3. We understand that uh, Rocky Mountain, of course, is traveled between both Edgecombe and Nash County. Of course, I was born in Heritage Hospital in Tarboro, North Carolina. <laughs> so, uh, certainly, uh, Tarboro is, is a part of me uh, for sure, a, a member of the uh, Democratic Party as well, but, but nevertheless, Rocky Mountain City Council is another part of the race. I do believe in working for all citizens in Rocky Mountain, North Carolina. I do believe that what we do at Rocky Mountain also has a, a, a it can have either a, a net positive or a negative to the surrounding communities. So it's so important that we engage in partnerships that make sense for the entire citizenry of this region. That's important, that we're all working together and not against each other. What interests me about the position of city council, of course, the very first thing I ever did was in my college dorm at East Carolina University, and I had the opportunity to see Ms. Rose Blover, a city council woman in Greenville, North Carolina, advocating for a very important issue in Greenville. Of course, that was them changing Fifth Street to MLK and all the kind of concerns you might see surrounding by that. Of course, they ultimately end up putting the MLK highway out on 264. But from that very moment, I saw how important politics was, especially at the local level. Of course, then getting a radio station in Rocky Mount 107.3, started engaging in uh, our city council, seeing what's happening there, and understanding at that time we had high utilities, created a radio show called True Curse Radio Broadcast, where we're talking about issues about utilities and educating people on things that matter to them. Because one thing about me, I, I certainly understand, it's not about Bronson. It's always about what's best for the community. What are some of the main points and priorities as a city council person in Rocky Mountain? Housing is one of the number one issues across this country. How do we make affordable, affordable housing? And of course, that, that's subjective. Because what's affordable to one may not be affordable to the other. So we must understand that each and every person has their unique differences, their strengths, and their weaknesses, and always be willing to listen and find out what the real issues are and how we can best accommodate everybody in this place called the United States of America, and particularly Rocky Mountain. 
One thing that I, I really dislike about Ward 3 is the fact that we have a courthouse right in our neighborhood. Where in the state, or where in this state, or maybe in the country, will you find a courthouse in the most margin, marginalized and fragile community? I do believe that our courthouse should be in our downtown community, where you have mixed commercial business and residential in our downtown area, a place that I, I would hope create and continue a vibrant downtown we're trying to establish in downtown Rocky Mountain. And one of the last things that would be a major priority for me is establishing a resource center in our community. Too often we dribble balls, we lift weights, but we never have a space in community designed for mentorship, designed for financial literacy, designed to, to talk about uh, personal responsibility. These things are so important for our community. I do believe that as we look through a possible demerger of our, our, our school system, what type of impacts would that have on Edgecombe County? What type of impacts that have on Nash County? Again, we must be working together when it comes to that situation. But I do know this, that with our school system, because of the way that it has been for so long, and Nash County, unfortunately, not uh, investing in Edgecombe County, it has created additional pockets of poverty, and certainly in Ward 1, Ward 2, and Ward 3. I do believe that if we have a full focus on educating our children, our Edgecombe County children, in the most innovative system possible, the world will make a beating path to Edgecombe, North Carolina, so their children can be educated right here on these soils. So I ask that we have family, friends, or maybe even your enemies in Rocky Mount that live in Ward 3, ask them to vote for Bronson Williams. <laughs>
because if a patient is not healthy enough to stay on the jobs, then how are we going to keep jobs in the community? If if the patient is not healthy enough to you know take care of their kids, then how can their kids get to school? You know, uh, even as I was working um, in the community, um, I went over and I helped served as a substitute because they told me, well, Crystal, you know what, you can't come to the school system because we don't allow volunteers in because of COVID. But I didn't let that be an excuse. I fought through that struggle. I became a substitute teacher and I got into the school system and I saw the health of our kids. I saw the things that was going on in the school system and I saw a greater need for education within our community. And as I like to equate it to, health equates to economy and the economy equates to education. And if we're not educating our youth, if we're not educating our families on the conditions that they're dealing with, if we're not instilling those values in them early on, then we are going to be in an unhealthy community. And I am sitting here running because even though I'm a nurse and I'm nervous, <laughs> um, that I believe that I have the passion for the people. I don't believe in any barriers, that there's any barrier that is too high to climb, there's not too wall, there's not a wall that's too high for me to climb. There's nothing that I'm unwilling to touch or do. Um, and I think once someone asked me before, well, why didn't you just join the team because you're a newcomer and you are the oddball? No one knows who you are. And I said, you know what? I had to think about that. Why didn't I join on and join your team? It's because if I wanted to be transparent, I didn't trust who I saw. And a lot of members in the community, they may not trust who I am. And that's where I was. And I felt as so though if we were open and we communicated with each other, then we'll be able to trust one another and make work for better. Thank you. And I'm Crystal Lynn Anderson. Well, well. It's good to be home. <coughs> My first pastor was here a couple of blocks away. And uh, thank you, Mr. Brunson Reason, thank you, Ms. Kristen Anderson. I am the council person for Ward 3. I am here because of the community of Ward 3, and I'm an advocate, and I want to talk to you at night about not what my plans are, but what the strategies and plans of Ward 3 is. Yes, you heard a lot of talk about Ward 3 being abandoned homes and other things. Some of that is true, but let's talk about some of the things that the people in Ward 3 have initiated through their own strategy and process. When I came into Ward 3, we had community organizations that at the end of the year, they had about uh, $100 in their budget, had uh, $500 for uh, night out on crime and, and Christmas parties. But now these wards have collaborated and within three year period of time, one million dollars have been put in economics and home sustainability. And we have gained the approval to starting a community wealth building process that these communities now have become homeowners. They have united and they are building their own home. They are rehabbing their community what is the best way to build a community than to have the community build it itself? We use the theme saying community-led, institutional supported. And that's what community wealth building is all about. Uh, Berkshire have not only completed one home, but is now building another home from the ground up. Around the Y, Mary Warren have collaborated and they're building their first home, rehabbing their first home. We have started a bike patrol that the county, uh, Cleacus, Sheriff, that we're riding bikes through our community, that they may have a personal look at who we are. We're doing social justice and involving our families in social justice. One of our young ladies that have been renting a home for 40 years. Can you imagine how many times she paid for this home? Maybe guess what? It's hers now, okay? Because of community wealth building. 100% attendance at our city council meeting. One year as mayor pro tem and the institute of the program. We talk about transparency. I don't want to talk about transparency for today. We need to talk about transparency of the history right. of communities that have been robbed. That's right. And that's what we got to do. 
you talk about uh, 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 regular prayer walk with churches, we have engaged our churches to become community resource centers. We have communities that Truth Tabernacle, a lot of churches, I don't have time to call all them names, but after school programs, summer programs, communities working together, turning their community around. A Butterfield Factory hired 60 people, started them off with 60, uh, with $16 an hour, two years, some of them people making $25 an hour. It's, we at Rocky Mountain have now, we have raised, raised the minimum wage to $15 an hour. You ask me why I want to continue to run? Because the community says we are not done yet. We're still going to show how to turn this community around. Thank you, Mr. Oliver. Thank you, Edgecombe County. Thank you. We all won. Nash County. And, and we've, we've only had 
equity and access to home ownership and wealth. And in some areas, only 3% because of 97%. I think the challenge for us is to be transparent from the history of the past and the present and the future. And if we can do that, then we can come together and move Rocky Mountain where it needs to be and not blame people, but look at what systems have done. when we look at what an issue is in Rocky Mountain, I would think anybody, maybe in North Carolina may be familiar with this, this uh, steel that we have in our, our community called the railroad track. The railroad track has divided Rocky Mountain for years, I believe since 1871, when they uh, separated or split the, the county, changed the county lines. What that did, for Rocky Mountain, which for some reason still lives today from people in the city and outside the city. They continue to have conversations uh, that are in the tone of black versus white. How in the world can we expect our community to grow if we don't see people as people? When we go to the hospital and need blood, they don't say is that black blood or is that white blood. It's just blood. When we are dealing with poverty, they don't ask that's black poverty or white poverty, it's just poverty. And so until we are able as people to sit at a table and have a conversation about what do you woke up this morning? What are some of the things that interest you? Not about what my ancestor, cousin, auntie, mama, and them did. We, that's, that's good to know history. But at the same time, we cannot get so caught up in some of the things that might have happened historically that we lose sight of the future. The future is important. I understand that they say if you, if you don't understand history, you're doomed to repeat it. But I believe we got enough educated folks throughout our community who understand what history is, but also when this person over here is bleeding, they get a band-aid or they need surgery. Let's deal with that. Let's not talk about who's going to do it, what education they got about it. Uh, let's get the problem solved and uh, figure out how to unite our community. But it's going to start with a conversation. Could you repeat the question, please? What do you believe is the highest challenge in Rocky Mountain, and how do you plan to address it? Um, I'm going to piggyback off of uh, Bronson. Um, coming to the community, I made a statement once that um, what I did see was diversity. And I was actually attacked about, about my comment regarding diversity. And the thing that I've seen a lot is a lot of black and white. It's everything is black and white, black and white. Um, and so that's one of the biggest challenges that's there in Rocky Mountain is folks are stuck on what they see in their natural lives versus looking at the future and what there is to come. Um, not realizing that when kids are born, they don't see color. They just see uh, relationship. They see uh, individual. They see the traits. And if we start focusing more on those intangible traits, then that we can work together and get along as a community. Um, in addition, in addition to that, uh, I believe that the other challenge that we face is um, is communicating. That sometimes people are fearful of communicating how they really feel because they don't want to be attacked or judged or because they've been around someone for so long that they're scared to share that they have a different opinion because once they say their opinion, they, they are attacked uh, because they don't think the same way that someone else does. Now, for Mr. Bronson and Crystal's question, why do you feel you can do more than Mr. Jordan has been able to do in the last three years? So it's uh, what can I do more? It's what can I do in addition to it? Just because uh, Bronson, or just because um, Ms. Jordan is the, our councilman now, or if I do become councilwoman, does not mean that we can't work together. Uh, too many times we're looking at which group we're in. Um, if I'm in, in that seat, then we can't talk, we can't get along. And that's the issue that we have. It's not what I can do more than him, it's what can we do together? And I think that's the biggest thing. When I first ran, I decided 
that we all need to get together because if I love Ward 3, if Jordan loves Ward 3, if Brunson loves Ward 3, why can't we sit together at the table and find what I, what's best for Ward 3? It doesn't mean that we should not be at three different tables talking about what's, what we need to do for Ward 3, or Ward 3 is one ward, not three wards. What can I do more than our current incumbent, Mr. Uh, Richard Jordan? You know, that, that's an interesting question. Because too often, again, it, it is an election, and so it, you, know, you want to try to talk about your strengths and weakness. But at the same time, I believe that we are in a world that we too often try to down our neighbor down any and everybody that we possibly can and talk about what faults they may have. But, but I'd much rather talk about strengths uh, that a person has and, and how we build upon that. So it's not so much of, of doing more as Crystal just talked about, but continuing. It's a marathon. You're passing the baton. So it's about saying, this is what Mr. Jordan has started. I would like to step in and, and help finish it. I, I, or continue it, not even per se finish it, because I think this work as elected officials is an unfinished work. You, you never really uh, can get to a, a finish point because there's so much going on in this ever-changing world. Uh, but, you know, I, I just hope that, and I have made it a business of mine, uh, not to uh, talk negatively about the, the, this man, Mr. Richard Jordan, uh, because it, it's, it's not about that. Uh, but what I will say from, from communications, I, I do want to continue uh, to expand our communication with the city, uh, because I do believe that uh, we need a comprehensive plan that everybody can, can follow and can relate to, uh, and so they know where their turn is for, for this success to happen in their neighborhoods. I think that is important, uh, but it's really about continuing the marathon that, that he has, has, has started. Uh, I, I do think that this election has brought out uh, that uh, instead of housing uh, funding that we have for War 3, because I think had it not been for this election, War 3 might not have had it. And so I, I think that, that that is something that I'm proud to say that, that we have. And, and elections drive out uh, the incumbents to do more. So it isn't a thing that we should never challenge people because it's, if we don't challenge, we'll always be in a stagnated state because people will get comfortable. Challenge is good for a community. I got no problem with either. Get ready. 
Are you interested in this position? That's the first question. I'm interested in this position because when first elected in 1990, I took it upon myself in the first six months that I needed to know all about and what a politician and being elected is about. Mm -hmm. So I spent $6,000 to make sure that I never walked in a board meeting and did not know or understand what and why I was in there. Now, the first time I was asked about running for the school board, I said to the individual that asked me, I said, I do not know about politics. I was trained at North Carolina Central University to be a home economics extension agent which now is called family and consumer science. And my teacher discovered my talent in the fourth grade. All right? And I graduated from high school age 16 and enrolled at North Carolina Central at age 16. So I had parents there were eight children in our family. And every single student, every single child was offered an education and received it. So I came from background that this thing right here that God gives us, we want to put it all in the computer and on the phone. But this calculator right here it's a working document. It's just up to us if we develop it and work with it. That's what it's all about. Now, I have nothing against technology because if that was the case, I definitely would need to serve on school. Okay? Because that's where we began our teaching and training. I spent over Two thousand hours in training for school board. So next person who wants to run, please talk to me, because I'm gonna put you on track. Because <laughs> you will need it. And if you're not an avid reader, don't even think about position. <laughs> Did you hear what I'm saying? <laughs> is six to eight hours prior to each board meeting, you need to do and prepare yourself. Edgecombe County, I represent Precinct 12-4. I didn't hear any candidate mention Precinct. I don't know where they started. Because that's the basis for supporting your position. I don't care what seat is. Okay? How many of you know your precinct and attend the meeting? Mm. Come on. Okay, on. now. Oh, she don't know how to get it started. <laughs> <laughs> Didn't even get started. I, I know somebody might have some questions. <laughs> yeah, come back with me. I'll sit down. Because I do know how to be obedient. <laughs> Where you came from 
But don't stay down there because of where you came from, when you step up, look up, you can see where you're going. I started here in Edgecombe County in 1969, making $469, and I thought I was making a whole lot of money at West Edgecombe School. <laughs> Back then, that was a lot of money. But more importantly, I knew I had a love. I had a love for something. Listen to this carefully. You can only become truly accomplished at something you love. Don't make money your goal. Instead, pursue the things you love doing and then do them so well that can't, people can't take the eyes off you. You're watching me, right? <laughs> Education is the key to everything. I stand here saying to you, I am a product of a dad who was in sixth grade, walked out of school. A mama who was in 11th grade, dropped out because she was pregnant. But they created a Dr. Evelyn Johnson because in school that we teach, like I do, when I was in the school, we teach kids who have to find out who they are and who all they can be. I'm running for this because I know how to do it. I know I not can only talk about it, I know how to walk school. I walked school for 40 years. 40 years I walked, the first thing I did, I learned how to teach, to talk. The next thing I learned, I learned how to let my ears do the talking till my mouth has something to say. In 69, it was in a, it was in a school set in the second day. I went to West Edge Coast. Check me out, Evelyn Johnson, big old Afro. <laughs> Walking in West Edge Coast school, you know, where mostly that, that, that one flag, flag step school. And so I, I looked on the phone, and I saw two pieces of paper. A brown piece of paper, a, a, a pink piece. I said, oh, I did. And I said to my, the parents came in, the white kids came, the parents, they came in the car. Black kids came, they came on buses. And all I could think about is check out those two pieces of paper. I said, what can this paper do that that can't do? The color doesn't make the difference. It's what we put in here. <clears throat> teaching is in my heart. Teaching is in my head. God say, gave me the gift. A teacher principal, state department, I know how to do what I'm doing around the table for boys and girls. Please, I'm from District 3, Princeville School, Carver School, and I'm out of here. today, but I'm thankful for the technology allowing me in South Carolina to be able to view and be a part. So I do thank the Human Relations Commission for this opportunity. Uh, why am I interested in this position? Uh, over 33 years ago, I entered the Wayne County Department of Social Services as a Medicaid worker. My goal was to stay five years. Um, but in that time, I realized that five years is not what I was called just to stay there for. But there was a purpose for me. I began to realize the needs of families in North Carolina, and they needed someone who would serve as an advocate for them. So I served 16 years as a social services director, the last 12 of my 16 years being right in Edgecombe County and serving the citizens of North Carolina. Uh, I've had the privilege of serving on the Edgecombe County Board of Education for the last eight years. This position is a critical position because it's a connection between the school board, our students, parents, our school personnel, as well as our community. I would like to continue serving on the Board of Education to ensure that our children have the opportunity they need to graduate on time and to graduate prepared that they can design their own future, they can navigate changes, and they can make this world a better place. 
I also serve on the policy committee, and that would be a priority to make sure that our Edgecombe County Board of Education is adhering to all of our federal and state policies. And then in our district, making sure that we're doing everything that we can to give every child the opportunity, regardless to their zip code, regardless to their area, their parents' financial status, but making sure that all children are treated fair and equally and that we're preparing those children whether they leave high school and go to the community college or four year institution, whether they go to work or into the military. One thing that's a priority to me when I'm on question three is that I would like to ensure that we continue to Edgecombe County, our scholar teacher program. This is a foundation that we have developed and this foundation helped those students who are Edgecombe County public school students who have an interest in teaching and becoming a teacher. This foundation support those students as they go off to college and prepare them so that when they graduate, they're able to return to Edgecombe County to work, not only just to work, but to be teachers in our school districts. This is a way that we can prepare our children for the future this is a way that we can prepare our community for the future. And this is a way that we can prepare this world for the, for the future. The amount of money that we invest in our children now will give a greater reward in the future. I close by thanking you for your support as I have served faithfully on Edgecombe County Board of Education for the last year. Edgecombe County is moving forward, and Edgecombe County needs a person to continue to be a strong advocate for children and families in the county. Someone who is a great leader, someone who is excellent in making those decisions, someone who attends meetings, uh, someone who understands our school system, finances, and being able to uh, look at multi-million dollar budgets and being able to understand our school system budget. That advocate, that person, is the person who has served for the last year, and that is me, Marvis Scott. I ask on May 17th for your continued support. Thank you. I'm, I'm Jewel Calhoun. I grew up here in Edgecombe County, and I attended Edgecombe County Schools all my life, so I love Edgecombe County Schools, so I've decided I wanted to run for um, Edgecombe County School Board District 7 as well. My top priority is to ensure that all kids in Edgecombe County receive the education they need and so deserve. I would, would like to start with ways to recruit great teachers and educators to Edgecombe County while also looking at ways to keep the great teachers we currently have. It was brought to my attention by a friend that her daughter didn't have a math teacher for three of the four years she attended one of the high schools here in the county. To me, that is just not acceptable. Hopefully, with federal grants and reallocations of funds, we can find ways to keep and get great teachers here in Edgecombe County. These kids also deserve clean, safe, environmentally controlled facilities to learn in. I know several schools in the county have had heating issues in the last year or two. My own child sat in a school all day with no heat, and I was not even aware of the issue until the school called later that evening to state that it had been repaired. Not even a week later, a local news station reported another Edgecombe County school was without heat. So I would like to personally visit these schools to assess other needs for repair and get those fixed as budget allows. As much normalcy as possible needs to be provided for these kids. Kids need socialization. I understand the risk of COVID, but I know the masks were a hot button last year, and I do think they should remain optional. And lastly, I will stand behind my Christian beliefs, and I have a personal stake in this school system, as I am raising an Edgecombe County public school student myself. As a new member, I feel I can bring new ideas to the board and would be a great asset to the team. These kids are our future and each and every one of them have the ability to do great things. And I feel I owe it to them to help provide them with all the means they should need for the best educational path to get there. Thank you. I would like to be the voice for your kids of Edgecombe County.
currently we are collaborating with Edgecombe County, Edgecombe Community College, Rocky Mountain for YC, Young Health Agency, and of course the town of Prestfield to accomplish this dream, which is also called the American Dream. The American Dream is real for all who would like to work for it. We have a vision which will bring hope, and that hope which will reduce crime, which enhances the quality of life for all citizens in Prestfield and Edgecombe County. Again, thank you very much for this opportunity. We have three candidates for the town of Tarboro mayor position. We are going to start. Let's see the ladies first. Brandy Chapel. Then we'll have Mr. Kate Bell and Leo Taylor. You have a question? Yes. Good evening. I'm going to start out with why am I interested in this position. Uh, my name is Brandy Chapel, and I'm a candidate for Mayor of Tarboro. I've been a part of the community for 20 years as a servant leader in Edgecombe County Public Schools. I've taught several people that are in the room. Mr. Ray Kwan right there. Uh, uh, <laughs> oh, sorry, sorry, Jaheem. <laughs> Jaheem, who's been a huge cheerleader for me. Sorry, Jaheem. <laughs> um, I have been a part of the community. I've listened to um, Miss Evelyn Wilson for 20 years. Dr. Evelyn Shaw Wilson. Yes, ma'am. <laughs> I've listened to her for 20 years at the beginning of the school year. I um, have followed Miss Evelyn Johnson out at Phillips um, after she was principal there. And I have been working in Edgecombe County Public Schools for 20 years as an English, Social Studies, and AIG specialist currently. I serve on the Tarboro and Bloom Board, have been a member of Tarboro Women's Club, the school improvement team chair at both Martin Middle and Martin Millennium Academy. I sponsored the National Beta Club for many years and built our community garden program <coughs> at Martin Millennium. I'm also a member of Calvary Episcopal Church where I serve in the choir on the altar guild and the flower guild. I'd like to be the mayor of Tarboro so I can accomplish more than simply presiding over official business. I want to work alongside our town manager, town council, department heads, citizens and civic groups to make Tarboro the best it can be. I want to let voices be heard that have been silenced for too long. I want to reach across Panola Street <coughs> and into other neighborhoods that have been left behind in order to truly make Tarboro a place for all. Um, the second question, um, my main goal is to expand current youth programs. As a teacher, that is my number one um, our, my number one thing, our children are our foundation in Tarboro. Um, I want to work with the current youth programs, Parks and Recreation, the Arts Council, Library, and schools to ensure youth programs in Tarboro are accessible as possible and other community resources. I also want to focus on career development and job creation, as well as job readiness. Along with education, I'd like to provide more, educate, more resources and better promote those we already have. With that, we can build our workforce, reduce unemployment, and empower our citizens. Fair housing and housing in general are important because the massive impact it has on a person's mentality, well-being, and finances, and because everyone, no matter their socioeconomic status, deserves a place to fall asleep with a feeling of safety and security at night. Uh, my actions to, this is my third question. Just making sure they've got that in the back. So my, this is the third question. Um, she's so excited, this is the third question. But I'm gonna go ahead and go. Uh, okay. uh, my main goal is to seek grants to support current youth programs and develop youth programs as well. I would like to involve our youth in the writing of grants. Ownership in the process will inspire leadership from our youth, give them confidence, and provide a solid foundation for them to build us up as they grow to become the next generation of caretakers of Tarboro. I would like to present grants to the, Tar to the Tarboro Town Council for approval and improve the quality of life for the youth in Tarboro. My main goal is to do more for the youth of Tarboro, help black and brown voices be heard, 
and to help combat poverty that has a direct effect on our citizens' well-being and self-sufficiency. I have worked with a cross-section of our community for 20 years in Edgecombe County Public Schools. I have taught and worked with youth from every part of the county and town for long enough to be teaching second generations. I know the inequities that many in our community face. And I have a passion for doing the hard work it takes to truly connect with individual scholars and families. Relationships are key to connecting with one's community. I'm a listener, a problem solver, an innovator, because that, because that is what one must do if they truly wish to change lives and <coughs> succeed in education. I am now prepared to use my skills to make change in Tarbara as mayor.
been back here since 1999. Why I want to serve in this role? As I said, I've spent six years on the council so far. My first year, I had served on the council two months and the mayor resigned. Uh, our mayor pro tem, a kind gentleman, was suffering with cancer. The council appointed me as the acting mayor. I served seven months of that year. Following that, I did serve as mayor pro tem. I want to continue to serve because I see the role as a cheerleader. Uh, human resources taught me as uh, when I did a lot of training classes, a lot of rolling out of benefits, I was a cheerleader for the company. I will be a cheerleader for Hardy's. I will also be an advocate for Hardy's and a rep for Hardy's. But Tarver, <laughs> I've spent all my, my life in Hardy's. But I will be an advocate for Tarver. And I'm retired now, which also allows me the opportunity to do this on a full-time basis. Next week is an example. I'm going to be in Wilmington, North Carolina for three days, representing Tarboro at the uh, North Carolina League of Municipalities meeting there. I look forward to being able to represent Tarboro in a number of statewide meetings. Again, why I want to be mayor? Because I believe my uh, 35 plus years in human resources, my six plus years already on the council, my year as an acting mayor, uh, allow me and give me the qualifications to do that. My uh, things that I would hope to work and to help complete would be, again, safety of all citizens, uh, how we uh, continue to grow our fire and police protection, provide all the services that citizens need for quality of life. Part of that is retaining the employees that we have. We train and lose. We have to find a way to retain the employees that we have and I think recruiting actually starts with the current employees and keeping them on the job. And lastly, I'll just say, we want to look at a way with the council that we can uh, enhance all parts of Tarboro. We need to bring all parts of Tarboro together and enhance each neighborhood so that each individual in those neighborhoods do have a good quality of life. Thank you for being here. And the last thing I will say is please go vote. starts already. I think we're moving forward. The council took some action a couple of years ago. We've enhanced uh, some incentives to bring some people in to build houses. Uh, so again, I think uh, what we have to do though is how we manage that growth in order to be able to provide the services that are needed. As I said, fire, police protection, and all of the utilities uh, that we offer. Garbage pickup. The greatest guys in this town or the guys that pick my garbage up on Tuesdays and Fridays. Uh, and we again have to look for a way to retain those valued employees by increased pay and benefits. Well, we didn't talk about board, we have to move. Uh, like I said, with 14% of our population without transportation, it's hard to get around. Uh, from my house, it takes 30 minutes to get to the grocery store. And if all we can carry is what's in your arms, you know, that's, how can you live yourself or live for your family if that's all you can do? And that takes 5% of your day. I think that we need to look at things, bike lanes, golf carts, anything to get folks moving around town, I think that that's very important. Um, you know, you're talking about trash collection. I had one of the fellows out at the farm, he went fishing, uh, caught some rim, I forgot to tell you about that. Um, but that, yeah. Just being open and honest and uh, being there for everybody, and that's what I'm doing. Yeah, the question was, what will be your first objective to move the town forward? My first objective in moving the town forward is first becoming the first female mayor. I think that's a, a great way to move the town forward um, for women. Second of all, I'd like to move the town forward for our children and create some more opportunities for the youth in our town. 
um, create a lot of youth programs for to get the kids off of the streets, get them in safe places, have more things for them to do. Um, I've gotten lots of suggestions at school, Jaheen, and, um, and they have given me all kinds of great ideas, um, but definitely our youth, giving them opportunities to be in the community, to be involved in the community, to be leaders in our community. And I believe in the children of Tarboro. Um, we have some really bright minds and they have lots of places to go and I want to help them get there. As you are aware, there are two animal shelters in the town. Neither is in good shape. Fundraising is underway for a new county shelter. But what is your plan or vision for a new town shelter? That's a great question. Um, I'm, a, I'm a great animal lover. I have four dogs and two cats and a chicken. And, um, and so animals are a big part of my heart. I do know that they are gonna be coming together and I would like to see us um, recruit some volunteers. That's something that our animal shelters are really lacking. Um, Jaheen wants to volunteer, he's telling me right now. Um, and I think that is something that, that we really need to tap into is our volunteer um, network. We have volunteers all around this town working for animals um, with the cat rescue, um, we have lots of volunteers, but we could definitely bring more people in to help man that shelter and help make it a better place. So I actually spoke with uh, Kathy Williams, who leads the current shelter for the county. Uh, and she's been leading the efforts to make a shelter, uh, I guess, out towards the detention center. And I've talked to Troy about this, our town manager, and he said that you know he likes having our own uh, shelter and our own dog catcher uh, with Lewis Britt, but at the same time, you know we don't need duplicity like that. Uh, and I think that it's a good thing to sit there and try to work out the duplicities that we have and try to work better together between the town and the county in this instance. The recent uh, town retreat. Uh, it's a little bit different subject, but we did approve through the uh, Rescue uh, America Plan funds that we got. We will have a dog park coming uh, uh, in the very near future. In regard to the uh, uh, animal shelter, I too have had a conversation with Troy and uh, Mr. Evans. My understanding, we're kind of kind of sort of waiting for the county to say what kind of support do you need from the town. Uh, so, to my knowledge, we're. we're we know we have that issue to deal with and we do want to be a part of that. Uh, whether I'm a councilman or whether I'm a mayor, I would move for the support of the town uh, with that animal shelter. Thank you. Also for the mayor of Canada, market rate accessible 55 plus apartments are non-existent in Tarboro. Not assisted living or continuous care, but apartments. Development sites exist. OIPA and the hospital, among others. Do you have any plans for this group of citizens who live in Tarboro? I will say I'm not aware of any immediate plans. However, um, uh, we know that we need additional housing uh, in Tarboro. As we said, we do have housing underway, and as was pointed out to me in a recent meeting uh, in town hall. Uh, Sometimes that's not affordable. So we do have to find a way to be able to provide uh, affordable housing as well. Um, again, at this time, I'll say over the last five years plus that I have been with the uh, council, we have approved and accepted about uh, five million plus in federal funding. Again, that is what it will take for us to be able to move forward in that type of uh, situation. It's hard for the town to do that itself. Uh, and a lot of that goes back to community development block grants, uh, of which the town of Tarboro, just this past meeting, uh, we accepted even more money to bring us up to a $1.6 million total. And a lot of that goes to folks on fixed incomes to fix up their houses where they otherwise couldn't do that. Uh, and I think that uh, Catherine Graham, our planning director, does a great job at getting that out to the point where we have a problem now with getting contractors to fill the contracts. Uh, I think that continuing that program is great. We need to keep at it. 
I remember before I even got on the council, there was a proposal at Helmut Green uh, that I think only one council member voted for to put that in place. Uh, and that was a, a private developer to do that, but ultimately the community pushed back. So we need to be responsive to the community, all of the community, but uh, you know, also take in as much money as we can and distribute that the best way that we can. had um, several conversations about this um, with with people that need this type of housing. They need single level housing that they have access to, be able to get into. Um, the grants that um, Tate's talking about are for homes that, that are in need of help and, and you had to apply for those grants and those ran out quick. Those are gone, you can't even apply for them anymore. So um, we do need a single level affordable senior housing in Tarbra. Um, I've talked with several people about the old IGA that would make it a fantastic um, single level um, home space for people that need that access to live. And we also need to have, it needs to be affordable for all people in Tarbra. And when I talk a lot about our youth in Tarbra, I had several people say, Tell me more about what you're gonna do for the aging in Tarboro. And that is one of my main priorities um, and something that I've listened to a lot about that type of housing. If we can get some housing, we can also open up other housing in the community. If we can get some of the people that are in some of the houses in these neighborhoods and easily accessible um, housing for, for aging folks, we will open up our housing market and be able to move more people into Tarboro, um, especially in this district. What are the plans, what plans do you have for racial equality in the town of Tarboro? I think the big thing is getting the community <laughs> together. Um, you know, we have these events, and we've had these events downtown, and I think that that is a good start. That is a good start to bring everybody together and to give us something fun to do that we can all enjoy together. Uh, now, where do we go from there? I don't know, but I think that that is a very good start. I think we need to keep having events, community events, to, to bring our community together, to have a good time, to kick back, and you know, see folks we otherwise wouldn't see. Uh, that is a start. What the next step is, we have to figure that out as we go. But that's a good first step. Yeah, thank you, Tate. I, and I, I think that's true. Uh, we need to look for uh, ways. Uh, there have been events that maybe have not brought as many people together as possible. But I touched on this in my uh, open comment to say here in Tarboro, we need to look at a way that we can enhance all of our neighborhoods cancel again on our retreat a couple of weeks ago. Uh, issue of a splash pad came up in, in replacement of a swimming pool. Uh, that splash pad is going to be put in East Harbor. So East Harbor needs to be enhanced right along with the things that go on at Indian Lake, with the things that go on around the E.L. Robertson Center. Again, it needs to be that if my grandchild comes to Tarboro to visit, uh, I have to take her or him over to the splash pad I don't have to think about, it's in East Tarboro. No, it's in Tarboro. That's one thing I would love to see us start saying Tarboro instead of this neighborhood, this neighborhood, or that neighborhood. We're all one. Uh, and again, one of the things that, that I hope to see is more unity among all of our citizens. Thank you. Um, my plan, is to go into the neighborhoods. Um, I've been into the neighborhoods. I've been talking in our neighborhoods. Um, we've held some hot. We've held one hot dog cookout over at Hussey Park this Sunday. If you want a free hot, hot dog, come on down to um, East Harbor. We're going to be at the corner of Oakland and um, and Wilson. We're going to have another hot dog cookout there. I'm inviting. I'm going into the communities. I'm inviting them to come talk to me and tell me what, they're, what they need. I wanna know what they need. And they're talking to me. 
I'm getting a lot of great responses. I've met a lot of awesome people um, in Tarboro that I maybe not wouldn't have wouldn't have met before. I'm reaching into the part down there by the Patilla School. I have I plan I will probably be teaching at Patilla School next year as well as with Martin Millennium Academy. Those are my kids in that neighborhood. My kids are all over Tarboro, and it's having the conversations that we have to have. It's not just having events and wishing people would come. It is going and having those conversations with people as people, because that's what we are. And that's why Tarboro and my, my slogan, a place for all, it's really a place for all. I really want to talk to everybody and know what you need, not just wish you'll come to events. This question was for the Tarboro Mayor candidate as well as Rocky Mountain City Council. What do you feel is this community's best asset, and how will your service and office capitalize on that asset? What is our best asset? The, the community, the people are our best asset. So, how do we capitalize on it? We capitalize on it by being sure that we have solid investment that will bring up people versus bring them down. Um, and, and so that goes part of our education system, uh, that goes to having a uh, high speed internet, uh, being sure we have options as uh, I hear Tall Girls getting Infinity Link, uh, Rocky Mountain is talking about getting Metro uh, Net, as well as giving some options for, for that. Uh, being sure that there are health opportunities for uh, clinics, hospitals, and things of that nature uh, is accessible to people as well. Uh, so investing in our, our people is, is the best thing we can do because that is a rock at the end of the day. Sure. Our people is our greatest asset, but uh, having uh, the people of our community to take the lead and that we follow and support our community. And that's why we have invested and community wealth field. It is led, it is developed, it is sustained by our community. They tell us what they want us to do, and we do. I believe our community best asset is the, uh, the mere fact that we are still developing. And when you're at the developing stage, that means a lot of individuals in your community, the members in it, can have input into that um, because we are developing that means that we haven't yet decided on a clear path, um, like Bronson was saying, that our comprehensive plan is outdated. So given that fact is when we get ready to create a new comprehensive plan, that we have everybody at the table and it opens you know, the room for the different diverse ideas to come in because we are actually developing. I think the greatest asset in Tarbara is our children. Um, they are the ones that we will be looking at and looking to in the future. They are the ones that we are working with now. We can help um, combat some of the issues and trauma that some of our students and children in this town have, have faced. Our kids have been through a lot in the past few years. They've, um, they've survived the floods, they have been through COVID, and they're resilient. I'm getting to see that in school every single day. Our students and our children in this town are our future. Um, we have a wonderful community surrounding them and we have to be cheerleaders for our kids and be the people that they need and the people that we needed when we were kids. And so our, our youth are definitely um, are my main focus, as you can tell, and they will be um, they are our best asset, and our and what will be, the, there'll be the people sitting here in twenty years doing the same thing. Yeah, I completely agree with Randy. I mean, youth is huge. Uh, after we lost our youth director at Howard Memorial Presbyterian Church, I filled in for a year as the youth director, and then I took it on part time uh, to help out with uh, scouts. 49, of which I'm an Eagle Scout. It's what got me involved in politics in the first place with the uh, Citizenship and Community Mayor Badge. I remember they are talking about the uh, the website for the town of Tarver. They're revamping it. I remember it got a little contentious and uh, 
And then it went on to talk about uh, the taxi cab rates that we don't have anymore. Uh, you know, how can we put our boots on the ground and, and be involved with the youth? What programs can we do? Uh, for me, I try to put my boots on the ground in those shoes. Uh, and what can the town do? I think we need to work on that. Uh, I would agree with every comment that's been made. Uh, when I think specifically about Edgecombe County, and I've said this in the, in the past, uh, some of the assets that we have certainly is uh, our people, certainly our youth. I, you know, I, I think it's fantastic that we have young people that want to get involved in politics or get involved in local government. As far as Tarver Edgecombe County is concerned, I think we have a number of assets. One is that community college that sits out there. And I hope we continue to see that grow Maybe one day people can go out there and get a four-year degree. Uh, so I hope that will be the case. But that is a tremendous asset for us. Um, the Vita Hospital with the new cancer center that we got that we dedicated a couple of years ago. Tremendous asset to Tarboro, Edgecombe County. Um, and, and I've always mentioned anytime, if you think about Rocky Mount, whether it's the Edgecombe County side or here in Tarboro, is the mighty Tar River. Uh, I, I think we need to enhance, and again, the town council has just, just uh, uh, moved forward with uh, looking at some ways we can enhance our waterfront. Uh, so again, number of assets in and around Edgecombe County. Tarboro sits in the middle of it. We're the largest town in Edgecombe County. Uh, so again, I think we need to take advantage of that. My wife will tell you, she can't watch TV because I want to watch PBS at North Carolina Weekend. I look forward to the day, and I think it's coming when Tarboro will be a weekend destination. Uh, and like I said, we've got a lot of tremendous assets to share. Thank you. All right, we're getting ready to wrap up. I want to thank all of you for coming. Your great questions. These candidates will be around a few minutes after we close out.
us giving acknowledgments uh, for the evening. Uh, I want to recognize all the candidates who have uh, put their name in the hat, stepped up to, to serve uh, we, the people. Uh, appreciate you all being here. Uh, I'm encouraged by the passion that uh, they all spoke with and their purpose for wanting to represent us. I uh, also want to give thanks to uh, the Edgecombe County Commissioners and the County Manager for uh, appointing people like myself to serve on the Edgecombe County Human Relations Commission. I uh, want to acknowledge my fellow <coughs> commission members for having the foresight to uh, put this event together so that pe the people could come out and get information and hear from <coughs> those who, uh, again, look, look to represent us. Uh, I know it's been a long evening, um, so I'll just say thank you for being here. Um, none of this matters without uh, going out to vote. Uh, voting is an important right and privilege, so please uh, take advantage of that. Uh, I'll now turn it over to the county manager, Mr. Eric Evans, uh, to close us out. Again, thank you. Good evening, everyone. My name is Eric Evans. I have the honor of serving as county manager here. Also a resident here in, in Tarboro, so this is helpful for me because I'll have to vote as well. Just want to say thank you to all the candidates that uh, are here tonight, those who uh, join virtually as well. Thank you all for coming here. I think this has been very informational. Again, just want to, uh, uh, to echo what Joseph said. Thank you to the Human Relations Commission for uh, doing such a wonderful job of sponsoring this, especially Commissioner Harris for moderating this tonight. Um, I look forward to working with uh, all of you, those both who uh, will find yourself elected and those that, that don't. I feel a commitment here tonight from you, even if you don't win the seat that you're seeking. It sounds like you have a passion for this county, for this town, and for our citizens. So. Anything that we can do from here at Edgecombe County on behalf of our commissioners, our 500 or so employees, where we stand ready to help you in serving our citizens. I hope you have a wonderful night. Please travel safely. God bless you.